Hi friends, welcome back to my home. So today's video has been in the making for the last couple of months. I'm so excited. This is probably one of my most favorite projects I have ever worked on and that is giving our kitchen a facelift. We recently moved into this old farmhouse and just wanted to give it a little bit of love, kind of bring it back to life and make it work well for our family. I'm not gonna make you wait any longer. We're gonna jump right in. So we're gonna jump back a couple of months and I'll show you what the kitchen looked like before, the different steps that we took to get it to where it's at now. I didn't film every tiny little nitty gritty because this would have been an hours long video multiple hours long video, but I tried to capture as much as I could along the way. A lot of this stuff is DIY, it's simple to do, it's really budget friendly, so I will talk you through all of that as I show you what we've done. All right, I wanted to give you a few before shots of how the kitchen looked before we even started. So this is the week that we moved in and um, as you can see, it's just a little bit dated. Also, there is quite a few mismatch things. There was mismatch hardware, mismatch cabinets. It was kind of a piece together kitchen where someone had just put together whatever they could get their hands on, I think. And so we wanted to make it feel a bit more cohesive. Also, along this wall that you see on the other side of that refrigerator, there just was em empty space that we could use and find a way to use it a bit more efficiently. Here is a view of how the kitchen was from this side. So this is how we kind of started the process out. We put some of the cabinets in place that we were going to be using. And then I went ahead and took all of the doors off. In my mind, I knew that it was going to be a long process. And I thought at least if I could get the inside of the cabinets painted, then we could at least put things away because we never actually put anything in these cabinets until they were painted. Um, I just knew that I wanted to get started right away and there was no point in trying to unpack and organize into cabinets that we were going to have to empty very soon. You all know how much I love taking something that is old and kind of making it new or finding a way to reuse it. That is such a special feeling and some of these cabinets were homemade cabinets. Um, they were made right there in that kitchen and so being able to keep them in this kitchen was really neat. You're going to see myself, my husband, and my dad in a lot of these clips. And of course there was so much work that was done outside of what I just filmed in these parts. Um, but they were all such a great help and we worked as a team. So this cabinet above the refrigerator or what was above the refrigerator was a bit odd for some reason. They had built this and then of course the wall next to it really had nothing on it. Um, so we had to take the cabinet down and also remove this odd box that was built above it. It was just an empty box there for the aesthetic of it, I guess, since the other side had a box above the cabinet as well, they decided to put this over here. So it was a little extra work just to reconfigure the layout of the kitchen, but it was well worth it as you'll see in the end. So the original island had the stove top in it and we created a new space for a conventional regular stove and oven combination. So we had to pull this out of the island before we could move it over. So here we're just taking the countertop off of the island and we did actually use a portion of this as a temporary countertop while I was waiting for the permanent countertops to come in. I wanna say a big thank you to Rainpoint for sponsoring today's video. So as you guys know, especially if you watch both of my channels, I have a garden this year and it's gorgeous, but it's on a hill and it takes a lot of work to make sure that it gets watered properly. Rainpoint is a smart watering system that will help you out with keeping your plants well hydrated and keeping your soil at its peak condition for growing great veggies, great flowers, 
whatever you want to grow in your soil. Rainpoint provides you with a lot of tools to help you with your irrigation and watering system. One of those tools is a two zone watering timer where you can control it from the app. It's great because our garden is up on a hill, so we have a hose that runs to that, but we also have flower beds and other things around the house that a second hose is great to be able to water around that area as well. Another thing we actually like to do is have the hose hooked up to the garden, and since we only have one outdoor faucet, having a second tap right there that we can turn on and off without having to unhook the hose that goes to the garden is really, really helpful. Also having the timer set up is extremely helpful. Even if we are away, I can set up for how long I want it to water the garden. And it also connects to the hub, which is the connection for all of these different tools that I'm sharing with you today. And it's even smart enough to recognize whenever we've gotten rain so that it doesn't overwater my plants. The way the system knows whether or not we've gotten rain is the soil sensor. Those are just devices that you can put in different areas, whether you have one or multiple gardens, and it will tell you whether or not the soil has enough moisture for your plants. The water flow meter is another tool that connects to the hub, and it's so convenient, especially if you are trying to watch how many gallons of water you are using per day, you are able to keep track of all all of that right in the hub. The high precision rain sensor is great because you can really tell how much water we are getting from the rain. It all connects to the app and you are able to keep track of all of those things specifically for your area. Of course, we can have weather apps for these things, but they're never truly accurate. This gives you an accurate reading of how much rain you have received. Of course, humidity plays another role in keeping your plants well watered, and they have a humidity sensor that you can hang outside that will tell your app how high the humidity is in the air, and again, telling you how much water you need to use to water your plants accurately. Between all of these tools and the smart hub and the app on your phone, you will be able to care for your garden with ease. It really takes a lot of work and guesswork out of it, and it makes your plants much happier and grow the way that you want them to. So go ahead and check out all of the information in the description box below to find out more about Rainpoint. I know that you will like this system as much as I have been liking it, especially in these hot summer months here in the Northeast. We really do have to keep track of whether or not our plants have gotten enough irrigation and to make sure that they have everything they need to grow. All right, so here is that box I was talking about. Um, it was probably one of the more challenging parts of this project simply because we had to rip it down and then we had to redraw a wall and re-mud this whole area. And like my husband said, he doesn't think that any more nails could have went into this. <laughs> it had so many nails. I think he ended up having to use a cr crowbar to actually get that empty hollow box off of the ceiling. So here the island is being moved and before we moved it completely over, my dad laid it over and we wanted to salvage as much of this as we could to use on the left side of the stove and oven. And what's so special about this is that this island was actually built here for this kitchen. So I just really wanted to salvage it and to be able to use it again just to stay with the house. And it is made out of solid oak. It's just a beautiful piece and it's so nice that we will be able to continue enjoying it in the newer space. Something else that really made this kitchen feel a bit dark, which it does only have windows on one end of it, so that was part of the challenge. That's why I went with a bright and light kitchen, as you will see in the end, but it had some lower hanging lights or lights that came down a bit further, so we took them down and we replaced them with like an LED, you, some people call them UFO lights, some people call them a puck light, that type of a thing. So we put that in to the ceiling where the original lights were and it really opened up the space and gave it a nice bright feeling. So to bring ventilation to the stove, 
we put a nice white range hood over the stove and I just really love that it's white. It kind of brings a more cottage feel to this and that's really the style I was going for, a farmhouse cottage feel with a few modern touches just to open it up like i said there's not a lot of windows so i wanted it as bright and as breezy as possible so here i am doing a fun little technique that i actually learned from a cabinet maker somebody that redoes cabinets so if you are going to put new hardware onto your drawers and cabinet doors you obviously have to do something with the original hardware drilled holes and so one thing I learned from this cabinet maker is to use wooden golf tees and I know that sounds a bit funny but you know what it worked like a charm it was just perfect I used wood glue to glue them in place and then after that Corey used a vibrating tool to just take them down to about the flush point of the front of the drawers and cabinets and then I sanded it from there and then we filled it with a bit more putty and the whole thing came together perfectly. Obviously we wanted to give the hardware a bit of a facelift but there was a lot of mismatched hardware involved in this and so I wanted to make it all seem more cohesive and just put together. So the next thing I did was sand all of the cabinets and I actually get this question um, once in a while someone will message me or I'll get a comment about it can you paint cabinets without sanding them and the answer is no <laughs> as much as I wish you could paint cabinets without sanding them and as much as you may see things advertise certain primers or things that will help you avoid sanding nothing really gives you that good bind between your primer and the wood like sanding the finish off it's just what you have to do so i took that painstaking task and went ahead and sanded everything and boy does sanding wood make such a mess but it is totally worth it and gave such a great finish to the cabinets so since the burners were in the island they had a wall oven and this wall oven you actually couldn't even get a full cookie sheet in <laughs> it was so itty bitty inside so we pulled that out and I used um, some creativity and really came up with an idea of how to use this space so you'll get to see that here in a little bit but the process of pulling it out, it was quite heavy. So this little dining nook on the end of the kitchen also needed a bit of attention. So underneath of where the table will be sitting, it was actually carpeted. I'm not entirely sure why. This corner actually had a shelf in it and I think it had a TV hookup. So my guess is that Someone had a TV in this corner and then had maybe two reclining chairs. It's not a very large corner, um, but a place to kind of sit. There's not a designated dining area in this house. It's a little bit of an interesting setup. So I wanted to make this into a breakfast nook or like a dining area for our family. So I painted everything the same color as the rest of the kitchen. And then we did rip out the carpet. Oh, that carpet, I'm so thankful it's gone. Um, and we're able to just make the entire kitchen the same flooring, which you'll see here in a bit. So Corey and I worked together to do the flooring. I did a lot of the cutting. So I was running pieces out and cutting them and he was installing them in the house and doing the measurements and giving me the measurements. So we really worked together as a team. And this is an LVT or LVP flooring. And I may actually be able to link it below the specific color. And what we did is we actually matched the color of flooring that's in the sunroom that is connected to this kitchen. And at some point you all will see me kind of give my touch to that room as well. But that's why we chose this color. It's not my personal uh, color that I would have picked. It's not my favorite, but it does look really nice with it being the same color as what is in the sunroom. So we finally reached countertop day <laughs> and my dad is putting the countertops together. And what is this board called, dad? 
This board is called particle board. Okay. It's very dense. So it works real good for uh, countertops because it doesn't move much. For laminate countertops. Yes, for laminate countertops. Mm -hmm. And we cut our top piece. This is actually upside down. And now we're putting the support pieces uh, around and across. And once that dries, the, the wood glue should dry for at least four to six hours. Once that dries, then we'll flip it over and we'll put our first coat of uh, contact adhesive on the wood because it's very porous. It helps to put one coat on and let it dry and then put your second coat on the wood and your one coat on the back of your laminate and stick it down. But the first coat should dry for a couple hours before you do that. And we'll actually put the laminate on and install the countertop. It's actually not a, a hard process. It's more just the time. Yeah, it's waiting for the glue to dry. Well, I always like to give ideas on how to save money and this is one, a very big one. Um, for only a couple hundred dollars, we were able to get do the countertops for the whole kitchen. And there's the big sink. I'm so excited about having a nice deep sink for all of the kitchen things I do. If you guys are not subscribed to my main channel, I do lots of cooking and canning and gardening and things like that over there. But this is the progress that we are making on the kitchen. So we removed the old countertops and even pulled this back lip off. That is such a dated way to do countertops. We did replace it with a piece of trim because our goal is to actually put a new backsplash in potentially this winter. So we just had to kind of give it the best little put together that we could and make everything functional. I went with a countertop color that resembled stone a little bit, um, just to kind of, again, go with that farmhouse or cottage type look. So here in this area where the original wall oven was, we made a place for our microwave and I also decided to make a potato and onion bin right under here. I found these wire bins that fit perfectly in here and then over by the sink I just put my dish soap in a pump and my hand soap and I am the type of person that loves to make functional things pretty. So if it serves a function and it kind of is decor, that is right up my alley. So on these hooks, I used some of these, I don't even know exactly what they're called. I wanna say cotton market bags maybe, something like that. And I just put some of our fruit in it. I got a bunch of lemons recently. So we've been using lemons to make my kefir water and do like a lemon ginger. It's been delicious. And right now peaches are just coming into season. And those are the only two we have left in our house. But I also hung a little sign here that has a Bible verse from Ruth that I really love. And I think it's gonna be fun to use this area to kind of dress it up for the seasons, whether it's fall or Christmas. I can hang little things from this to go along with the seasons. I love keeping a ceramic pitcher by my sink to water plants, to fill pots. I always have something like that on hand. So I put that over there with a nice little succulent. And then I just recently got these. They're actually, I believe, burp cloths from Amazon. I will leave them linked below. They come in several different colors, but I've been trying to reach for these more often than paper towels. I do still use some paper towels, but kind of trying to find a good replacement for paper towels. Something that if I need to just wipe up something quick or wipe my fingers, they will be right at my fingertips to use. And I just pop them in this basket above the refrigerator. It's an easy place for me to grab them. And then I also put a little plant up there as well. I love these wooden lidded canisters. And I just think that it's fun to have glass things where you can see the contents inside of there. So I filled them with things that we use every day, things like coffee and um, some sweeteners that I use and also like my collagen that I put in my coffee. This is kind of my little area to make my coffee. I use a French press so I can heat the water in the teapot and then make my coffee. We also make a lot of popcorn in our house. So having this right next to the stove reminds the girls if they want a snack, that's something that's easy for them to whip up. 
And I've been trying to drink more chamomile tea. So these are chamomile flowers I'm putting into this little jar. And they do have a seal right inside the lid. So I think everything will stay pretty fresh right there. And then on the other side of the stove, I went ahead and put a little plant that I think will do pretty well right there. And I got these absolutely adorable oil dispensers on Amazon. I tend to buy my oils in large containers. Like I have recently been getting my avocado oil actually in gallon jugs. So this is a way for me to just use the amount that we need. And they do have a great top on them. The lid seems to be very secure. So I think that they work really well. I love having a candle burning in my kitchen when I'm cooking and whatnot, so just put that there. And then I also got these little, I don't even know what they're for. I think they might be for spices, but I had to buy two of them. They don't come in a pack of two, but these little wooden lidded dispensers for my salt and pepper. All right, so I'm standing here at the doorway. The whole layout of the kitchen is just so different than what it was whenever we first started. Sorry about the lighting. It goes in and out right here because there are some skylights above this area. So this is the small table that we were using in our other house and we just really, really like it. There's actually a little stool that doesn't have a back on the other side over there. So there is five seats for the five members of our family. And this window looks out to this bank out the back which I've started my herb garden area out there. Corey just put a bunch of that in today. So it's beautiful to be able to look out at the flowers here while we're eating. To this side, the windows go out to the screened in porch and you all saw me do the makeover on that. I can link that below. So just like in the living room, there is a backup source of heat here in this room. That's what this is for. We do live a little further out. So at times we don't have electricity, so we can still heat the house even if we don't have electric with some propane that is what that is so obviously this is the new side of the kitchen now that the island that was here is gone and we have a range hood here a nice pantry cabinet that we added in over here in the future there is a potential to do like floating shelves on this wall or something of that nature i don't know exactly what we'll do but for now it's very functional everything works out well and with canning season just beginning i just needed to wrap up this project the best that i could so that i can focus on a lot of other things going on like i said there is a pantry cabinet here which brought a lot of much needed storage to the kitchen it's nice and long and has lots of shelves inside which i will be organizing with you all very soon this door goes to the laundry room which has not been painted yet as you can see then over here i organized things that i use on a regular basis things i can reach for quickly and then i make my coffee in a french press so having my tea kettle there is important i love plants so I'm starting this guy up here and eventually hoping that he will grow down the side of the refrigerator. Just a nice green pop up there. On this side, you all saw me organizing all of this. Just things that we reach for often and my little butter dish there to keep butter soft for a yummy homemade bread and other things like that. This here I actually just propagated off of my big ZZ plant in my living room and I'm hoping that it will grow and get nice and tall over there. So switching sides now, we're gonna go over here 
and I just love this corner. It's probably, I don't know what's my favorite here, but I really love it. And it works out well for storage. I'm one that loves to make things that are functional, beautiful, so it works to hold fruit or any other produce. This little bag hanging right here, I've actually been using as a coffee filter because my daughter accidentally threw away the lid to my French press and I'm waiting for my new one to come in the mail. So I've been just straining my coffee with that in the morning and it works out great because this tile is here. So even if you put something up there that's a little damp, it's not going to damage the wall. It can dry right up there. So those hooks are going to be fantastic for drying different things if we need to. Things like the dish scrub brush can hang there. Um, I just think I can use that for a lot of different things. So here is where the old oven was and we're making use of it with a microwave and those bins that you all saw. You can see that I put in some black hardware to go along with the faucet and let's just take a moment for this sink. I can't even tell you how thrilled I am to have this sink. There's dishes in here cause you know what? normal everyday life, but just to be able to use that large sink for canning, gardening, um, just washing large pans and things like that is so incredibly helpful. And one other thing that we actually added in was this pull out trash can here. This was a cabinet. Um, I think it had some other type of rack in it and we used it in the pantry, but we were able to convert this into a drawer pull out system. And I can leave the link for the system below cause I actually got it on Amazon. It has two bins right in there and it works out so great cause we don't have to worry about sticking a trash can somewhere else in the room. So one other thing that we did is we are hoping eventually to change out this backsplash. So this trim right here, this edging that's around the back of the countertop is actually a temporary piece. And potentially this winter, whenever we don't have gardening and other things like that going on, we could work on this. We just kind of set it up so that it flows together well right now. And then when colder months hit and we wanna do some inside projects, that is a potential project. Here you can kind of see everything from this side and you can also see the skylights there. It's one long kitchen. I had a custom prep table made that you guys will often see on my other channel in recipe videos and things like that that is actually collapsible so sometimes that sits in here but now it is so much more open and just functional for a family and as a family that likes to cook a lot of homemade meals we are using this space to the maximum <laughs> we love it so much i truly hope this video inspired you especially if you're trying to give your kitchen a facelift on a budget i feel like there's so much you can do to transform a space without breaking the bank. Please subscribe if you're completely new. I know that if you love homemaking and organizing and home decor, then you will really love my channel here. And leave a comment below. I love to read your comments and respond to them and chat with you all. Give this video a like and I will see you all in my next video.